Once upon a time, in a little room, immersed in the stillness of the night, a little light was flickering, seemingly unable to rest. For many years she had protected the mistress's sleep through the darkest nights, but now something was troubling her deeply. The little light gathered her magical energy and began to flutter around the room. She needed to clear her mind. She paused to look at a picture of her keeper, Alicia, with a thoughtful but determined air of someone who knows it's time to act. The girl with the sweet and ready smile was in the dark place, but the little light had a plan. All she needed was a willing helper, and she knew exactly where to find the perfect candidate. Nauseating sound reminds me of someone. Charming as ever. Rest assured, I would leave you in peace if Alicia weren't sick. Sounds serious. Let me know how it plays out. Enough of your wisecracks! There's no time to waste. She's been taken by dream demons. What do I know about dealing with demons and sick girls? But Alicia... Not interested. I always said you were just a stupid egotist. <sighs> And she kept on believing you were a hero. Listen to me, you luminous little bug. I have no idea what you're talking about. Dream demons? You've got to be kidding. That little girl shut me away in here without batting an eyelid. If something really did manage to get in her dreams, I'm sure she can deal with it. Ooh, now I understand. She hurt your pride, did she? How long have you been stuck in this box? Months? Years? And now, you're refusing to help her because she abandoned you. Why wouldn't she want to play with the stupid, filthy old bear anymore? Well, let me spell it out for you. You're pathetic, cowardly, <sighs> despicable. Darnation, enough with the sermon already. Just tell me what's going on, and then turn yourself off. Ah, uh, poor unfeeling bear. Alicia, our mistress, has fallen into a deep sleep. I know it sounds awfully strange, but demons are devouring her subconscious. Sounds like hogwash to me. But even if it were true, what could the two of us do about it? Trust me, you are the <gasps> last toy I want to ask for help. Cut to the chase, Parasite! Okay, okay, why are you in such a rush all of a sudden? As I was saying, I can use my magic to lead someone into Alicia's dream world. You protected her from monsters in her sleep for years. Ah, so you finally admit that Alicia preferred me to a stupid luminous bug when she went to sleep. I wouldn't brag too much if I were you. I'm just saying that even though you're just a dusty, decrepit old bear now, once you're in there, no one will be able to stand up to you. So what's the plan? Destroy everything in my path? More or less. Okay, then I'll come with you to stretch my paws in the world of dreams. Stretch your paws? Maybe I didn't explain. You've already explained plenty, Parasite. I don't want to be anyone's hero. But you and these demons are really starting to get under my fur. Believe me, you have no idea how frustrated a stuffed animal can get, shut away in a box for so long. What's happening to me? I feel stronger and lighter. We're in Alicia's dream world now. Your appearance is shaped by her imagination. This is starting to get interesting. Let's go. Let's go, bear! So dark in here. 
<laughs> a light bulb that's afraid of the dark? Very amusing. Look, over here. Let's try to turn it on. Come on, fur brain! Armor, huh? Whatever's going on with Alicia's imagination, things are looking up. strange smell and who might you be <laughs> you don't smell like a filthy wolf are you lost by any chance <clears throat> uh, i guess so but if you would be so kind as to show me the path i'll be on my way a <sighs> serious air of judgment my dear didn't your mother warn you about <clears throat> getting lost uh... it's too late now the forest is infested with abominable wolves who can't wait to tear you to shreds. And they've already caught your scent. So, am I done for? There might be a way to save your fur. If you can get to my grandma's house quickly. If you'd let me get up, I'd already be on my way. Try not to lose your way this time. Hells are giving me the creeps. But we aren't here to run away. We're here to fight, right? No, Furbrain! This is exactly the right time to run away. We have to find a weapon. You won't last long without one. Hmm. But don't worry, stay still for a few moments. I'll use my magic to mend you. Can you at least try to be a bit more careful? Bear with me, Bear, and stop moaning. <clears throat> there you are, good as new. I have to admit, you did a surprisingly good job. I know, pretty impressive, right? The only impressive thing around here is your ego. Waken fear, wolves. A rusty pair of scissors. Don't you recognize them? They are the scissors Alicia wasn't allowed to play with as a child. You won't find a better weapon in this world. 
All they need is a little magic. Oh, wow. The scissors have gotten rid of that pesky bug. Maybe they really are as powerful as she said. Charming as always, but do try to be more careful. I fused my magic with theirs to awaken their true power. You can do it. Come and get them. <sighs> ah, splendid. Now we're talking. Let's find out what these monsters are made of. kill them all anyway. I'm not taking orders from a petulant pair of scissors. Just concentrate on the task at hand. By absorbing their powers, we will become stronger and stronger. It's the only way we can save Alicia. Just once, could you make yourself useful without bragging about it? With the energy we have absorbed, I can enhance our skills. I hope these skills you're so proud of are worth the time I have to spend putting up with you. Oh, bear of little faith. I love the way you slaughter those revolting wolves. I delight in the hatred I see burning in your eyes. A reflection of my own loathing. What in tarnation is this monster? Did you kill it? All on your own? He's the king of the wolves. It wasn't easy to take him out, but seeing you fight got me so excited. So I wanted to surprise you. With a giant corpse. How thoughtful of you. No, my dear. It's not a surprise. Help! Help! This bear killed the King of the Wolves! Here's your surprise. A fight that will drench the entire forest in blood.
What in tarnation happened here? I don't know, but I don't like it one bit. Let's hurry along, shall we? That was incredible. You managed to get this far. Darn, little girl. Watching you fight always lights a fire inside me. I'll wait a minute. This time, it's the forest that's on fire. What are you ranting on about? You have been excellent, Bait. Thank you for luring all the wolves in the forest here. None of them will survive. Now I just have to exterminate the last few remaining in their den. I'll soon put an end to their nasty little species. Darn psycho! Yes, bad. You're right. What a funny coincidence. Funny? We're in a little girl's nightmare, and we're about to go under her bed. I don't like this one bit. You old coward. Let's leave the squabbles for another day, you luminous bug. Right now, we need to stay alert.
she wouldn't die that easily. Thanks for the vote of confidence, not to mention the assassination attempt. I've got the room all ready for our final dance. And I can't wait to paint it with your blood. It's an honor for my scissors to accept your invitation, my lady. <gasps> oh, maybe I should have warned you about something. In the midst of blood, I get much stronger. Dead? What in tarnation? <laughs> You're still the same old gullible. Cut to the chase, demon. Just tell me, what am I doing here? You're here because you killed that bloody crazed little girl, Teddy. And I'm deciding whether or not to destroy you. Answer me this one question. Do you know who I am? A bright-eyed freak who wants to kill me. I see. You... you don't remember. Don't remember what? Ah, my head. Don't you dare leave! I'm not done with you yet. Already, glowworm. I'm awake. You're back. You completely lost consciousness. What happened? How on earth should I know? One moment I was here, and the next, something. something tried to kill me. Ha! Only you could pass out and have a nightmare while you're already in the land of nightmares. Come along, let's get a move on. Alicia can't save herself. Little fairy's voice boomed through the cave with the force of a mighty roar. And the roar grew louder, and louder still, the cave itself was roaring. From the walls to the vault, everything started shaking. The cave was collapsing. Teddy ran towards the sunlight as fast as he could, dodging the deadly rocks that were falling all around him. He summoned up his last reserves of energy, and he leaped out of the cave, just before it came crashing down behind them. Safe from danger for now, Teddy and Lighty paused to catch their breath in a verdant clearing. Finally, fresh air! For once, I have to agree with you. It sure is a relief to get out of that cave, or out from under the bed, or... Well, from wherever it was. Uh -huh. What's this shiny bag? Huh. <laughs> they must be magic beans. 
Magic beans? Of course. We're at the house where that nice boy lived. The one who traded a cow for this priceless treasure. Mm, priceless treasure. Would you please stop repeating everything I say? Beans for a cow just doesn't seem like a great deal. You don't think so? This plant grew from just one bean. Does the deal make more sense now? Okay, I suppose that's pretty impressive. Just out of curiosity, what happens if you eat them? Don't be ridiculous. They're much too powerful. Only a complete half-wit would eat them. The risks would be enormous. <laughs> <laughs> Furbrain, what have you done? Uh, nothing. I just ate the magic beans. Can a bear not get hungry in this world? You're hopeless. But since you haven't exploded, let's figure out how to make the most of your new powers. A rope made out of sewing thread. That gives me a brilliant idea. Me too. I can charm your stitching thread and use it as a rope. I can tie you up and leave you here. Very funny. 
Okay, okay, I admit that's not a bad idea. Let's try it. Brilliant deduction. You're kind of electrical yourself, after all. But well done for noticing the raging lightning storm with its deafening roar. Be quiet! Lightning bolts damage us, lighties. I'm terrified of them. Quickly, we have to get past them. For the first time, I am starting to enjoy this dream. Come on, it'll be an electrifying ride. Oh, so even the headstrong bear can get excited every now and then. 
Thanks to you, it didn't last long. Let's keep going. A giant gate, a giant castle, giant enemies. <laughs> It'll take more than that to stop us. Well said. We aren't afraid of <gasps> ah, a giant! <sighs> Suddenly, an enormous, filthy jar fell upon our unfortunate heroes. They were trapped. A terrifying giantess lifted the jar to examine her spawn. Pleased with her haul, she walked away humming contentedly to herself, taking our unfortunate bear with her. Transported against their will to an enormous castle, a pungent and revolting smell overwhelmed our two heroes. They were in a kitchen, surrounded by a vast selection of the finest ingredients, but everything was rotting. The giantess placed Teddy on a shelf making sure he couldn't get out. Then she walked away happily, but she would be back. They had to get out of there, and quickly. Furry animal! Tasty dinner! Happy husband! Hey, who are you calling dinner? I'd get eaten just to slice you up from the inside. Let's get out of here. We're here to kill armies of nightmare demons, and you're losing it over a simple sign? It's called prudence! What do you want, stubborn bear? What? what did I tell you? Kill these things! Kill them all! Right down to the last one! Thank 
Something serious went down here. Maybe it's the work of that chap who stole from the rich to give to the poor. Really? Not another lame storybook tale. Now isn't the right time. More to the point, does that bow work? Sure, it's imbued with magic. Look at what a battle fairy can do. Ta-da! Great idea. Shouting ta-da! in a dresser full of zombie cookies. Don't worry, we're safe here. Now show me what you can do with your new weapon. Safe, huh? You're one jinx bug.
Very bad feeling about this. Oh, come on. How in tarnation am I supposed to kill this thing? You feel that? You giant goose monster thing? I smell the stuffing of a teddy bear. Mm. I've been waiting for you, my little dinner. Bow to your king. Your majesty, you better get out of here before your dinner kicks your- Wife! Why is my dinner still alive? Wife? Not no. Is this overgrown troglodyte your wife? as well. You insolent bear! You're mine! This castle is mine! Everything you see is mine! Wife, pick me up! Let's make them pay! Yes!
Teddy jumped onto the paper airplane, animated by Lighty's magic. As the giantess's hand fell upon them, the two heroes took flight, escaping the terrible creature. The king, furious, ordered his wife to chase them. She had to catch them at any cost. She broke into a desperate run, reaching up, 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 to seize the two fugitives. Without realizing, there was no longer any ground beneath her feet. Free of pursuers, their journey continued without incident. Then Teddy saw a mistress floating island in the distance. The airplane glided down to the surface of the sea, and Lighty promptly turned it into a small boat. Our plucky adventurers had reached the fabled Never Again land. What is this place? Islands floating in the sky, do you remember from Alicia's books? The one with the three headed monkeys? I give up. Hey, look what I found. I've got a brilliant idea. Welcome to my home, Traveler. I'm Stan, the genie of the lamb. I know you're going to leave here happy today. How do I know? Because this is the place where multiple reckless wishes are granted. Multiple, isn't that great? And in return, freedom is given. Think about it. Three wishes for one of us, freedom for the other. Isn't that great, kid? Yes siree, everyone's a winner. Ah, but I see down in your eyes, you're wondering if I'm a real genie. Is that right? Then, let me show you what real magic is, kid. <sighs> Pretty impressive, huh? <coughs> Left you speechless. Amazed. Hey, what in tarnation? Shut up for a moment. You said I have three wishes, right? One, get me out of this darn lamp, it stinks. Two, destroy the nightmares that are tormenting the little girl. Three, get out of my sight. Forever. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Come on, my friend. That's not how this works. You're the one who has to fulfill three of my wishes. Otherwise, what sense would it make? You have only two options. Grant my wishes, or stay and rot in this stinking land. But since I <laughs> already know what you'll choose to do, for my first wish, I want to be able to fly. Head to the forest of the Black Fairies and kill them all. We need to collect enough magic dust for me to absorb their power. What are you doing still standing there? Go to the Black Fairy Forest and kill them all. It'll take a lot of magic dust for me to soar like a majestic eagle through the infinite blue of the skies. I hate this guy. But at least I get to kill fairies, which is one of my favorite pastimes. Charming. Anyway, those are vulgar tooth fairies. Don't you dare compare them to me. If you say so.
We found it. Don't move, Bear. Do you see those glittering stones on the ceiling? They are guardian gems. Don't touch their treasure, whatever you do. I don't usually take advice from a talking light bulb, but... Okay. Ah! I told you to be careful! Calm down. There's gold everywhere. It's not that easy. Gee, scurvy landlubbers. Stop where you are. That was just a shot across your bow. The next will send ye to Davy Jones' locker. What? What kind of creature are ye? Ye don't look like one of those cursed fairies who plunder me loot to exchange it for useless teeth. I beg your pardon? Ye're about the same height as a dwarf. I want ye and my crew. Ye will be the fluffy personal dwarf, and that's an order, or I'll pull out your stuffing for me pillow. A tantalizing proposal, Captain, but I'm only here to get your treasure. Ye scurvy-ridden scallywag. Arr! Ye starting to shiver me timbers, and no mistake, dwarfs, load your cannons, prepare to board. The darn pirate is hiding behind the parapet! Is there no way to reach her? That chest is full of fairy dust. Let's find a way to exploit it.
You did it! I'm rich! I really wasn't counting on you pulling it off. But now, I can count the gold coins you stole for me. I may have forgotten to tell you, the uh, captain has a soft spot for little ones like you. Hmm. I wasn't expecting to see you again. But hey, here you are. That's enough about you for now. Let's get back to me. There is still one wish you need to fulfill. The third wish. Hmm. The final one. The end. But not for me. My final wish is for rejuvenation. Bring me the elixir of eternal youth. And kill the flying boy who never grew up.
works. Can you make it usable with your weird magical bug sorcery? I certainly can. It will become a weapon of supreme power. Sure, sure. Just get on with it. With this, you can annihilate anything in your way. Even enemies? Especially enemies!
Give me your tea. You did it, kid! I can fly! It's time for my second wish. I want to be rich, absolutely rolling in it. Steal the pirate treasure, and make sure you kill all those freebooters. I don't want them chasing me to get it back. Of course, no survivors. Who cares as long as you get your wish, right? And why should we care? Oh, it looks like a weapon. Let's go get it. This will be fun.
is creepy. It's downright terrifying. I can hardly believe we're in Alicia's dreams. And unfortunately, it's just going to get worse and worse. These demons are feeding on her subconscious, her emotions, and her feelings. Who knows what will happen to her mind if we don't destroy them quickly? Whoever's doing all this to her will pay. I can assure you of that. Nothing behind me, only my shadow. Oh, bring it on. For a miserable old bear. You saved me from that shadow. You little brat. Did nobody ever teach you manners? You're all the same, you grown ups. You think you can teach us how to live, how to be wise. But just because you don't have much longer to live, it doesn't mean you can carry on living through us. And I don't claim to be the wisest, but I'm not stupid enough to believe you're a normal kid. You stink of death. You were controlling that shadow, weren't you? You're a shrewd one, Grandpa. I'll make you an offer. I'll allow you to drink from my fountain of youth. A single drop could make you at least ten years younger. And I'll let you go. I'd rather not fight. It would risk ruining my flawless skin. This thing. Don't tell me it's- It's an elixir of youth. Don't make that face. All those brats ever thought about was playing games. It didn't take much for me to lure them with my pan flute. Like so many mice. I kill those other demons because it was my duty, but with you, it's personal. I'm gonna cut you to pieces.
Not again. Look who came back to see me. Any chance of finding out who you are? And what you want from me? Who do you think I am? A sadistic nightmare demon? You really are a very astute bear. I'll be whatever you want, Teddy. And my first duty as a demon will be to open your eyes. As if I could trust. Let's talk about the monster you just defeated. Doesn't it seem strange to you that a creature so full of selfishness, so rotten and treacherous, could live in the dreams of a little girl? Where are you going with this? Uh, wait. Oh, I don't feel very well. Uh, my head's spinning. Do you really believe a monster can dwell in the mind of someone who doesn't share the same darkness? How dare you compare Alicia to a little boy who steals human lives out of pure selfishness? I won't let you talk about her like that. Ooh, we get very riled up when it comes to your little girl, don't we? Believe what you like. The truth is that I mainly wanted to distract you and waste time. Distract me from what? From the fact that, even as we speak, I'm slowly absorbing your powers. You... what? Don't worry. I did it last time as well. <laughs> you won't die, I think. Consider it a tool for enjoying a friendly chat with a demon. You... cursed. See you soon, my dear. We will meet again. Of that you can be sure. strange creature try to kill me. Under normal circumstances, I wouldn't worry about you. But right now, Alicia's safety is at stake. Please, be very careful. These nightmare creatures are treacherous and dangerous. If you get the chance, kill them without hesitation. Can you keep going? Yes, I'm feeling better already. Don't worry about me. Hey, you! You can come out now. The fight's over. I did it! I defeated the demon boy! <laughs> you did it? All right, all right. We did it. Where is my last wish? Here it is. How much do I have to drink? A sip? A glass? A bottle? Well, the little boy said... The kid said the stronger the drinker's magic, the more he needs. A creature as powerful as you will need a lot. Drink your fill. Well said, kid. I'm so powerful that I'll drink it all, just to be sure. Wait, what's happening to me? I'm... Uh... Disappearing! So long, jabbering genie. Enjoy a few million years of rejuvenation. Bear, you tricked him! Remember, we're still in Alicia's mind. Is this what you want to teach her? Don't lecture me. The moral is clear. Be careful what you wish for, or you might end up getting annihilated at the hands of a vengeful bear. I give up. I know you have fur where your brain should be, but still... How much longer are you gonna keep this up? Instead of wasting time moaning, where to next? We could fly back to the pirate ship and set sail to our next destination! Aye! After passing three tests, I deserve a pirate ship of me own! Arr!
You've got the hang of it. At this rate, we'll get to the ship in no time. Please just keep quiet for once. When you talk, it usually brings bad luck. Just then, a sudden gust of wind blew out of nowhere. The fairy dust scattered on the wind, and the unfortunate bear began to fall. He fell into the deep blue sea. Teddy gasped for air. His fur was soaked through and he struggled to stay afloat. He hadn't noticed that the ominous black smudge below him was getting bigger and bigger. An enormous and terrible dogfish emerged from the waves and swallowed them whole, before sinking back to the depths of the sea. Teddy and Lighty found themselves in the dark, fetid belly of the beast. Bear, can you hear me? Are you still in one piece? Why are you always screaming? I'm fine. Luckily... Wait until we get out of here alive before saying that. are these I've never seen anything like it let me take a look ah! there's someone in here or something I say we get out of here before we find out hey don't leave me here wait for me You! I have no intention of being your guinea pig! The subject is requested to proceed to the test area. Maybe he can't hear us. Or he's ignoring us. The test will start shortly. Please wait patiently and don't touch anything. Does he mean this? No. The test subject is unable to perform or understand simple and basic tasks such as don't touch anything. He doesn't sound very nice. Wait, let me give you a hand. Ah! What a fright! Looks like we managed to get away again. Don't pop the champagne just yet. Remember the eggs from before? Whatever was in there is hatched. The subject has failed the social 
civilization test. The subject is extremely violent. It attacked my real children without hesitation. Real children? Those monsters? Please proceed to the next test area. for the second test almost complete please tell me he's not going to wake this thing up second test in progress Get up with everything you've got kill it i'm trying Figure that out myself. Now let me fight!
can only be escaped through violence. Its strength is disproportionate to its size, and it seems to know how to use some kind of magic. Further physical tests will be required to understand the nature of its power before dissecting it. Don't you get it, light bulb? We're the target. specific and in-depth experiments.
second physical test. Flight test. Subject shows no sign of intelligence. It continues to kill my children indiscriminately. Its physical abilities, however, are impressive. I could certainly get some good material from its body to work with.
test. Speed test. Subject is requested to run to the end of the designated course. Why on earth should we run? Creepy. He's risking by getting me riled.
subject, who from now on shall be referred to as the patient. Given the delicate operation it's about to undergo, has finally turned up at the test area. Late. Oh, don't worry. I'll be sure to kill you quickly. The patient continues to be restless and violent. We will therefore proceed with anesthesia for mechanical trauma before full dissection. Who exactly are you planning to dissect? The anesthetist in charge will be the eldest of my real children. You're calling this thing a real child? You really are crazy. The patient's irritating remarks are reminiscent of those lying fairies. They didn't want to use their magic to give me real children. Fortunately, science doesn't lie. And science, yes, science can create life. And now, let the procedure begin. Mega 
simultaneous double slap. How do you get out of this place? You killed the doctor! I'll never help you! Can you at least tell us if the doctor had a plan or some way to get out of here? No! No, there's no way out! Someone here isn't very good at lying. Let me take a look around. Let's see what I can find. Even if you do find a way out, we're still at the bottom of the ocean. There is no escape. Let's see. Nails, bolts, wooden planks, shark blood. These are all the items he used to create these strange creatures. We aren't strange. We're normal children. Aha! Uh -huh. Water fairy dust. This could be useful. You fairies are already useless when you're alive, let alone as dust. Their dust makes everything waterproof. We'll need it in the ocean. Hey, you talking pile of wreckage. If you don't tell us how to get out of here, you're gonna die too. I don't care. You won't get anything out of me. Bear, there's no more time. We have to escape. Darnation. What had begun as mere sparks were starting to burst into hungry flames. A roaring fire soon broke out, and Teddy and Lighty were forced to flee. The laboratory was now completely engulfed in flames, and thick smoke spread through the beast's entrails. Eventually irritating the terrible dogfish enough to cause it to spasm and sneeze violently. Teddy and Lighty seized the opportunity to let themselves be launched out of the huge creature, onto the seabed with the dark and mysterious ocean all around them.
collecting all this junk. This heap of scrap is all from the human world. Doesn't look like junk to me. It's time to go catch some overgrown fish.
I just can't take it anymore. The queen can't force us to live out of the water. Shh. Are you crazy? You can get sentenced to death for saying things like that. We all know she's obsessed with the world above, but since the king died, she's gone too far. I heard that she did terrible experiments on some merfolk to make them more human. They're only rumors. I'm sure they're completely unfounded. Just leave it. We should concentrate on our patrol.
surpassed my dragon fleet and my army of centaurs. Are you talking about the seahorses that shoot bubbles and the leaping seals with the tridents? 
I know you are here because the rumors of my beauty have reached you. Well, actually... Gaze upon me! Drink in my beauty with your eyes! You have earned it! Also, because it's the last thing you'll do before becoming a part of my collection of human treasure. <laughs> are you done? I'd rather gouge my eyes out than have to look at you, you weirdo fishwoman thing. Oh, you're one of those, are you? One of those poor, envious people who try to belittle true beauty. I do wish you can still admire me while I kill you. Let's skip the formalities and move on to the part where I rile you up before you can use your powers. Oh, I see somebody has finally summoned up the courage to fight back. Come and get me. Son! 
stop running away. <laughs> running away? You run away from danger, not from fluffy bears. For now, I'm just toying with you. Cursed cat demon. I'll make you pay for your arrogance with interest. You insist on calling me a demon, do you? This is getting tedious. You could at least try to entertain me with some witty repartee. In the meantime, do keep trying your best to destroy me, okay? You're doing really well. You and Entertain yourself! Tell me, Teddy, as you confronted that monstrous fish woman, did you ever wonder how much of her realm was her own doing, and where Alicia's subconscious began? What the tarnation are you raving about? Huh. Her envy of human girls consumed her and brought her to ruin. But that's not all. Starting with her subjects, the whole ocean world has been made to suffer, becoming polluted and corrupt. I don't blame you for slicing her to death. But did you hear her singing? Ugh. That was the main reason I killed her. Very droll. But I know full well that you hated the rot that permeated her realm. Well, are you sure it was all the demons doing? How much of that perverse world do you think sprang from Alicia's own mind? Stop that! Stop talking about Alicia like she has anything in common with you. Oh, come now. I'm just making idle chats. I was just thinking of offering you another point of view. What if it were Alicia's imagination that created a welcoming place for that morbidly envious demon? Now you're really getting me riled. Alicia isn't like that. Oh, my dear Teddy. But that's the point. Alicia was also like that. You are so obtuse and superficial. You only remember the sweet little girl who played with you. But you were incapable of really observing her, understanding her, and grasping her nuances. You were so blinded by her hugs and sweetness that you overlooked how weak, angry, sad, selfish, and envious she could sometimes be. You can't admit that alongside her inner light, there was also restlessness and darkness. How dare you insult her like that! I was always with her. And sure... And sure what? Did it never occur to you that she may have left you in the box because she was ashamed of you? What? What are you saying? I'm sure it was just a coincidence that you were hastily put away after her friends called you old and shabby, right? What did they say again? Hey, Alicia, do you still play with stuffed animals? Look how filthy it is. Keep it away from me, it probably has fleas. <laughs> That's enough. You've spent months in that stinking box since then. Or was it years? Is this the little girl you want to save? I said that's enough! Finally. That's the real you. A creature with a rage so strong, it transforms its own fury into blazing infernal flames. A power worthy of a demon. A power that for now is best placed in my hands. We're almost there, Teddy. I'll take care of making you the master you were always meant to be. In this nightmare, there is no place for heroic knights in shining armor. Yes, I try to kill her, but 
She's much more powerful than she looks. Well, you're here now. That's what counts. When you're feeling better, we can carry on. The mermaid's body has jammed the garbage disposal. That was nice of her. She opened the passage for us to get out. Maybe she wasn't so bad after all. Come on. Teddy kept going, running, swimming, and flailing through the putrid slosh of the sewers. When they reached the end of the pipe, our trusty companions found themselves in the city's enormous sewage treatment facility. There seemed to be no other way out, so Teddy decided to try pulling the chain in the center of the room. The room flooded with water, creating a whirlpool that flushed them away along with the waste, like an enormous toilet. Tossed about and half submerged, Teddy was sucked into an even more tortuous pipe until he was finally sped out of the drain in a jet of slime. The drain seemed to have dropped our heroes into an equally fetid swamp. Thank you. 
Is that you, my prince? You made me wait for such a long time. Yes, it's me. My gosh, you're so beautiful. But what's wrong with me? And who are you? Forgive me. I'm sure you must think I'm not making any sense. A wicked curse binds me to this place. My body has been lying dormant in this forest for many years. I've been waiting for a pure-hearted knight to come and liberate me. Forgive you? I'm afraid I'll have to ask you to forgive me. I'm already on a mission. But I'm sure that sooner or later, a knight who can't wait to save a damsel in distress will show up. No, wait, please. I have never trusted strangers and supposed knights in shining armor. I've seen so many of them over the years, yet you are the first one I feel I can call upon. I've been too scared to put my trust in any of the others, the defenseless girl that I am. And what makes you so sure you can trust me? Believe me, I'm not exactly the most wholesome bear in the woods. You don't have to worry. I have chosen you. My heart belongs to you. Find me and I will be yours. Cross the swamp at the edge of the Bramble Forest. I will be waiting there for you. I... I don't even know why. But I would really like to save you. But I can't. I have something urgent I absolutely have to do right now. Oh, I understand. You already have promises to keep. Your loyalty does you honor. I know I'm asking a lot, but... I would like you to indulge a selfish whim of mine. I would like a kiss from you. I've been waiting to meet you for so long. What happened to the girl? Did she get hurt too? What girl? You started babbling nonsense and then launched yourself at those brambles! Was it just an illusion? It felt so real. A girl trapped in the forest was asking for my help. Help her? Oh, this is all we need. Listen to me, Bear. We are here to save Alicia. We will not help anything that is not Alicia. We will kill it! Is the concept clear? I can judge for myself what to kill and what to spare. Let's go.
Who dare disturbs my sleep? Get out of my sight, treacherous creature! You don't look scared, little knight. Should I be afraid of a mound of talking rocks? A man who fears nothing is a man who loves nothing. I can read your heart, and I know that your weakness is not fear for your own life. Tell me, what would become of the ones whom you want to protect? If I were to destroy you right now... Pretty insightful for a pile of rubble. But there's one important factor you didn't take into account. <clears throat> I'm stronger than I seem. As I imagined, words are useless with you. There's no point trying to scare me. I'm wasting away. But I can neither live nor die. The time has come for me to fulfill my last duty as king. Show me that your courage is stronger than your pathetic desire to sacrifice yourself. And why should I prove anything to you? Do it, and you will get uh, back this weapon uh, you are not yet worthy uh, of wielding. Then, uh, you will be free. That piece of metal could be handy if I'm unarmed.
Hey, I passed your stupid test. It was a walk in the park. I'm pleased to see that the test has forged your courage without blunting your tongue. Now, kneel before me. Did you make me go through all of that just to humiliate me? I kneel before nobody. <sighs> okay, I'll just give my legs a little rest. I hereby dub thee Sir Knight, O Grave Bear. The magic that has kept me alive is now yours. May it guide you with wisdom and justice. Hey, wait a minute. I don't want the destruction of a statue on my conscience. I was not meant for human life, but to be the essence of future memories. Remember, little knight, sometimes light is used to save and protect, sometimes to subjugate. Those who illuminate your path can do it to guide you, or to cast shadows on the paths they do not want you to see. Never follow the light of others. Do not trust anyone. Trust only in yourself, and in what you feel is right. Sure, it was pretty tough, but... The scissors are overflowing with power! It's incredible! We must absorb it now! We'll become even stronger! Get ready, Furbrain! We can now smash the enemies with all our strength! Well, I'm fine, by the way. Thanks for your concern.
of my night. I have continued to observe you in silence, and I struggle more and more to hold back my heart that quivers for you. I'm confused. Well, you are brave, honest, and loyal. You are constantly risking your life to save others. And I know that I can only be a burden to you at this point in time. I would give you my useless, empty, and cold heart, but I fear you would find it repulsive. Well, I wouldn't say that. You are so beautiful that I'm finding it hard to, to think straight. Please don't mock me. My heart yearns for you so. One more word and I don't know what will become of me. I... I... I'll be back for you. I promise. As soon as I finish my mission. Tell me again. Tell me while you hold me tight. Now my every thought, my heart, my soul, my very being are for you alone. Please don't- There! Can you hear me? Are you still in one piece? Ah, my head. Wake up! All right already, glowworm. I'm awake.
My knight, you will come to me. This is the happiest day of my life. Come closer. <sighs> Only the warmth of your body and your kisses can awake me from the numbness of the curse. I've been waiting to meet you for so long. Please don't make me wait any longer. Come to me. I... You had the chance of being lulled to a sweet, ecstatic death. But... Since you insist, I will just have to tear you limb from limb. Sound easy. She hit me. I'll end up in tatters. Again. Welcome back, Teddy. You know, that was pretty sordid, watching you flirt with her, and then take her out so unscrupulously. I just don't get you. What is it you want from me? Nothing. I'll take your energy and send you back. I have nothing to say to you. I have no idea what your problem is, but... Uh, energy too fast. I'm sorry if I'm not as sweet as your princess in the woods. <laughs> what? The tarnation kind of a nightmare monster are you? Why, why are you acting like a jealous girlfriend? Jealous? <clears throat> Me? Uh. Uh, he passed out. I suppose that will have to be all. Bear! Bear, are you okay? 
Yes. <sighs> Would you please stop electrocuting me? Well, excuse me if I get worried about you and try to help. I know, light bulb. Thanks. Um, could you repeat that? Repeat what? Ah! Get moving. Ah! Or I'll leave you here. I suppose you think you're a mighty warrior for having just about managed to defeat a girl who was half asleep? Pathetic. I'll make sure you remember where your proper place is. You are pretty arrogant for a floating flame. I'm almost starting to like you. This form is but an infinitesimal spark of my power. Now, follow me. Seems like a barrel, alas. More fun than you, anyway. <sighs> At the command of the haughty Willow Wisp, an opening appeared in the wall of brambles in front of Teddy. Before setting off, Teddy contemplated the dark tangle of gruesome brambles for a moment. Following the magical flame, Teddy hesitantly set off along the oppressive path that seemed to lead to the deepest depths of that accursed forest. At the end of the perilous journey, Teddy looked up in awe. An imposing castle rose from the ground at the heart of the malignant dark forest. One final challenge awaited Teddy within those decrepit walls. Welcome to my castle. Get comfortable. Make yourself at home. This place will soon become your tomb. Such hospitality. He sentenced me to death without even offering a cup of tea. Seems that the blade has remained imbued with this green magic, and that the castle reacts to it. This castle is frozen, protected by immortal phantoms. Face them, and show me a fight worthy of my consideration.
creature. So the only method you have found to kill it is to use the most powerful magic in existence, mine. <sighs> that noise. Has a passage opened somewhere? Of course, let's follow the eerie light. I don't see what could go wrong. Don't count on defeating them by using the same strategy twice. My phantoms are cunning.
Not bad, but now it's time to make the challenge a bit more interesting. My magic can take many forms, too many for a mere mortal to be able to comprehend. Let me give you a taste of what I'm capable of. A taste? Does that mean I'm finally getting that cup of tea? Hey, Luminous Bug. Are you alright? You've been very quiet. Sorry, Bear. I... I was absorbed in my thoughts. We only need to defeat one more dream demon. The strongest of them. I know. We are so close to saving Alicia. Yes. I suppose I'm just nervous. We absolutely mustn't fail. Don't worry. I'll slice it to pieces in a heartbeat.
You've used my magic to fight so far. But what if a phantom were to appear right now? <sighs> Come on! Keep those furry paws moving, Bear!
Hey, flying rabbit. Now it's your turn to run away. Touring with you has been entertaining, I must admit. But now your time has come. Don't fear. You will not die in vain. I will make you my new Phantom Guardian to watch over the castle. Follow me. I think you must have forgotten about that team. Certainly more than the prince who holds him. Let's take it. He certainly doesn't need it anymore.
It would have been better for you if you had been defeated by the mirrors, little knight. Now you will have to suffer a much, much worse fate. Find a way to use its flames against him. <laughs> it's working. After a grueling battle, Taddy managed to force the terrible dragon to land. To save Alicia, there was just one last thing to do, and Teddy was ready to deliver the coup de grace. He summoned his last reserves of energy, gripped the sword tightly with both hands, and threw himself against the enemy with every ounce of fury he had in his body. The thought of Alicia was his beacon. The dragon's beating heart, his target. Teddy prepared to deliver the powerful and deadly blow, when suddenly, at the last moment, Lighty removed her charm from his scissors, turning them back into two harmless pieces of rusty metal. The bear, confused, lost his balance, turning just in time to see a powerful magical ray piercing both him and the dragon. Betrayed. And defeated, he collapsed on the battlefield. Teddy was immersed in impenetrable darkness. He allowed himself to be lulled by the void. No little girl to save, no enemies to fight. Finally, it could rest. So what was that nagging sense of discomfort which was becoming more and more intense? Could the thought of having abandoned Alicia cause as much pain as being pierced by a needle? Ugh. A porcelain doll was standing to his wounds. As he was looking around in confusion, the witch cat hovered. He shivered. Was this the end? The cat reassured Teddy that nobody meant him any harm. But the time had come to clarify. To clarify what? That the demons he had killed were Alicia's dream guardians, the defenders of her inner realm. But how could the guardians have taken on such monstrous forms? The cat explained everything. Alicia's subconscious was reacting violently in order to protect her, like an immune system attacking a virus. And this virus had a name. Lighty. So that sneaky little bug had been trying to worm herself into Alicia's subconscious to corrupt her, but why had Lighty chosen him to carry out her evil plan? The answer was simple. He was the strongest and the bravest of Alicia's guardians. Was he really one of the guardians? How could he have forgotten? When Alicia had abandoned him in the chest, a crack of weakness had opened in his soul, giving Lighty the opportunity to put her wicked plan into action. She had wiped a vital part of his memory with a spell, 
causing him to forget his true role and his power. The frightful fairy had tricked him, turning Alicia's most stalwart defender into a ruthless weapon to attack her with. The defeat of each monster had nourished Lighty's magical powers, allowing her to grow stronger and stronger. Teddy was aghast. So that was why the witch cat seemed to have always known him while he couldn't remember anything. He had forgotten that she had once been his most trusted ally in protecting Alicia. He had forgotten that the cat was a unique creature that resided in the deepest part of the girl's subconscious. The cat was her limbic system, her super ego, the supreme entity that defended her unconscious self, and as such, her powers could only be fully manifested in the furthest reaches of Alicia's dreams. The witch cat could only look on helplessly from afar as events unfolded in the rest of Alicia's dream world. At first, the cat was enraged as she watched Teddy assault Alicia's dreams, but she knew that mere words would not be enough to convince him of Lighty's true nature. She decided to try provoking him, mocking his beloved mistress, hoping that his anger would reawaken his memory and rekindle his powers. Unfortunately, things didn't go according to plan. The cat was thus forced to play a more subtle game, lurking in the shadows, waiting for Lighty to reveal her true nature. Each time the witch cat met Teddy, she had absorbed as much of his power as possible in order to heal the wounded guardians. The fog in the bear's head was slowly clearing. He still had a lot of unanswered questions, but his anger at Lighty's betrayal and his determination to save Alicia awakened a strength that had lain dormant for too long. A burning fire, ancient, powerful, and reassuring, enveloped him. Teddy had become more savage, a feral creature. To fight a nightmare, you have to become one yourself, he finally understood. The time had come. The witch cat sent him back to the world of dreams. But nothing was as he remembered. What in tarnation happened here? Light ah! is feeding on Alicia's <sighs> dreams. <laughs> it's funny seeing you jump with your monstrous new look. What are you doing in my head? I forced a direct link between all of us before sending you back. We are all here to help you. And to offer you what is left of our powers. Please accept them, as modest as they may be. Could you please all stop talking at the same time? Silence! You're going to give my poor teddy bear a headache. Uh... As you know, Lighty has absorbed most of our magic, becoming almost invincible. We're pouring our remaining powers into you to give you one last chance. Uh, don't waste it. Always were the frank one, weren't you? I appreciate the frankness. I know I'm putting my fur on the line here, but I promise you I will rip that little traitor to shreds. Now shut up and let me fight. <laughs>
light bulb. How much did you eat while I was away? You? How can you still be alive? I have absolutely no intention of getting killed without destroying you first. Do your worst! I am now a goddess in this world! Bulb. Ready for round two? was supposed to protect and reassure Alicia. Instead, it was hiding your true nature. How dare you judge me? Have you seen yourself in the mirror recently, you monster? My appearance reflects exactly what I am. A furious bear who is going to kill you. There's still time to see the error of your ways. It doesn't have to end like this. how it's supposed to end. We dedicated our existence to protecting Alicia in her sleep, only to be abandoned. Only one of us gets to decide how this story ends. I get where you're coming from. We're both old, worn, and tired. But just because our energy has faded, that doesn't give us the right to absorb hers. It's too late for noble words now, Bear. Let's settle this once and for all. This isn't the ending I wanted. But I'm not going to back down now. Bring it on, light bulb. <laughs>
by your whisker. My hero. I didn't do anything that special. I just... I just turned off the light. Hmm. Well, when you put it like that... Nonsense. His deeds will inspire ballads for years to come. It was a hard-fought victory. Let him have a little peace. Rest now, Teddy. You've been a very good man. The nightmare was finally over. Alicia, illuminated by a ray of morning sunshine, opened her eyes. Her parents were there, staring at her in disbelief for a long moment. Before taking her and holding her in a warm embrace. Who knows what challenges lay ahead for the little family. But for one magical moment at least, they all lived happily ever after.